Hey everybody, Jose here with LRT. Today we are going to do a full specifications, discussions, comparison, and contrast of the MDT single pull, double pull, and triple pull bipod. Okay, so as we mentioned, today is gonna to be a full discussion of comparing the various specs of the three sky pods that I have here in front of you. Now, I understand that the, this is actually what they call the standard height single pull. There is a PRS height. It's gonna be shorter, narrower uh, than this one is. Uh, frankly, I, I don't have a whole lot of use for it because I found this goes absolutely as low as I want. However, there are a lot of PRS shooters that would like those heights and if you're that person then it's going to be pretty obvious to you i don't think you necessarily need these differences to know you wanted the short one to begin with um, so a quick overview real quick this is not going to be a review of these items uh, they're proven uh, they work for field matches very versatile positions quick changes of elevation and angle and everything in between not what we're here to discuss we're here to discuss the difference in specs so that you can make the educated decision on which one of these threes best fits your needs as far as um, just application and the like. Uh, so a couple things, these are all three, the Gen 2, so now SkyPod, if you order one uh, brand new directly from MDT, uh, they're all gonna be Gen 2. The upgrades, uh, there's a couple of them, one of them being the knob, the torsion knob for cant. So as you can see, if I was to twist this, um, this knob here is what tightens or loosens that uh, tension there, and that can be uh, manipulated with either a bullet, a screwdriver, an Allen wrench, anything that would be cylindrical and skinny enough to go through uh, that knob. So you can tighten that down to your uh, preferred uh, likeness. Um, there are a couple different ways of attaching. So all of these are going to be what they call right-handed ARCA, which means that the tensioner to, to clamp it down is going to be on the left side. I, I'm right hand on the gun. I can reach up with my left hand, loosen, slide it, what have you. So these are Arca. They have it for Picatinny. They have some that are kind of blank top where you can buy like a uh, various brands that have um, other clamps for them that can be Picatinny or Arca as well as they do make one actually for uh, direct attached to sling stud as well. So be aware of that. There's a couple of different things there that we don't have to compare on us, I run everything ARCA, but you do have those options as the customer. Um, a couple other, one other upgrade that I really love is actually the twist lock on the Gen 2. So as you see that button there uh, in the upward position, it's locked and this one is locked right now and your twist is very minimal. Uh, and then when I reach down and unlock it, now I can pan left and right about as far as I want, pretty much 180 degrees, uh, maybe past. I've never tried, I don't like to twist it that much, but especially for packing it or carrying it on a sling, uh, the Gen 1s, if they happen to loosen, they would start to twist on you even while you were carrying them. This way, um, you can just lock it in place and it stays on you and you're good to go. I actually run mine locked most of the time um, and they work really well for that. So aside from that, what are we gonna talk about today? Um, you know. We're going to talk about the differences in height, width, the settings, etc. So quickly on how to adjust all of that, we know that these things will go 45 degree forward or flat um, using that little thumb knob there. Uh, this is all very easy for one-handed manipulation as well as for the varying widths. There's a little button there that's going to be on the back of all these. It'll be facing you as the shooter if you mount it um, how it's intended basically uh, and then go from very narrow middle setting on one side, middle setting on the other side, and then finally the outer two settings. Uh, so great uh, varying width there as far as that goes. Um, and then as far as obviously lengthening the height, you can go all the way down with just the pull of one hand and then reach up with one hand, obviously your gun being attached to the other and slide it back up with just the press of a thumb. Absolutely easy to use. Um, and so we're gonna measure actually um, the different capabilities across the three and then we'll finish up with weight uh, as obviously especially if you love using these for hunting like i do that's a big consideration uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about application as well let's very quickly go over what creates the differences in the leg section so obviously to me it would make logical sense that if a single pull was 10 inches tall and a triple pull was 30 inches tall that the 
double fold be somewhere in the middle, right? Halfway in the middle. Um, that's not exactly what happens and that's okay. We'll go over, over that late, later in the video, but just very quickly to give you an understanding of the leg sections and kind of what the dimensions look like. Right there to the top of the leg section, uh, the, the, the whole leg section there on the single pull is gonna be seven and a half inches. So seven and a half inches from ground uh, to the top of the slider. Whereas on the double pull, what you actually end up having is about um, six inches from the bottom to the top of this first leg section. So in my mind, just from doing a little more digging online, it looks a lot more like this is about the standard leg section for their what they call their PRS length, and obviously this being the standard length. And so what you get is a double of the PRS length in your double pull, and then you've got your standard there. Um, and like I said, it's about seven and a half inches of length. And then your triple pull is gonna be even longer than that. One leg section alone is actually nine inches. And you're gonna get obviously almost three of those. So we'll notice then when we do talk about height and even the width, that is why you get such varying differences um, that aren't kind of uh, proportional between the single, double, and triple. So obviously if we needed to, there's a lot of the mid range, you know, a lot of guys are gonna run these center center as you see here. Uh, but for the sake of just understanding what the extreme capabilities are, we're gonna start with the absolute lowest. And the way to get your shortest ability out of these bipods is obviously go the widest and retract your legs all the way up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure to the top of this um, ARCA clamp here, just realize if you're using a different clamp or you have a thicker rail on the bottom of your gun, what I'm giving you is just to the top of the uh, bipod. So if we measure the, um, this is the single pull here on your left as the viewer, the top of that ARCA is going to be just over five and a half inches. When we go to the double pull, the top is gonna to be actually right about the same. It's just barely over five and a half. Uh, so they both can get pretty low there. Uh, and then the triple pull, as you see here on your far right, um, if we push this down to the ground, uh, the top of the clamp here is just at eight inches. So five and a half, maybe closer to five and three quarters for the double and then eight inches on the triple pull. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about the width of the sky pod. So as you can see here, um, obviously they're, they're varying widths uh, of capability as far as max width goes. Uh, and that just has to do uh, with obviously the length of the leg sections um, and how many leg sections there are. Why does this matter? Um, in matches, I've had to use some wide positions here, especially when you're talking about like rocks, if you're on a pile of rocks or whatever, or actually I had a buddy shoot a deer at, at quite a ways with my Gen 1 spread about like this across a little gap. Uh, and it was quite sturdy for him, but just real quick um, to let you know how far you can reach, uh, basically from tip to tip here, the Gen 1 is gonna be about 27 inches wide. When I say the Gen 1, I mean the single pull. Then the double pull is actually gonna be uh, 32 and a half inches wide uh, from tip to tip. And then if we quickly move over to uh, the triple pull, it obviously goes quite wide um, at close to 68 inches from tip to tip. I will tell you, um, I can't imagine ever having to run a triple pull this wide. Who knows? I think the triple pull is much better suited for height than width. As you'll see, there's actually quite a bit of bounce there. Not that you couldn't take a shot like that, but I would probably be seeking to just drop. I'd almost rather drop them down into a hole than across a hole uh, for this width, but uh, the double and single pull, uh, very sturdy. And I can see you using the width for that quite easily. As you can see, uh, when I mentioned earlier, talking about leg sections, here's gonna be your single pull, your double pull, and obviously your triple pull. And there's a big jump uh, from the second to third as compared to from the single to the double. Um, the single, if we measure it out real quick, uh, from the ground to the top of the Arca is gonna be about just over 14 and a half inches. So that's really the tallest you're gonna get this. It's the most narrow, the most extended on the uh, leg settings. When we look at the double, you're looking more like 17 and three quarter inches. 
And then when we step over here and look at the triple, then you're gonna get pretty high up here. Uh, you're right at 36 inches uh, for the most extended narrowed up um, that you have here. Okay, so very quickly, let's discuss the weight. If we start off with the single pull here, you'll see it's 23.4 ounces. Uh, and one quick note, uh, let's remember that this, very specifically the top half of the clamp here, is something that changes depending on which bipod you have. So this is strictly for the Arca attachable bipods. But anyways, you've got the 23.4 ounces for the single, pot, uh, single pull. Then the double pull, you're gonna have 26.75 ounces, so about a three ounce gain. And then when we go to the triple pull, we've got 37.8 ounces. So about 11 ounce gain there from the double to the triple here, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 pounds, somewhere in between there. So, um, you know, there you have it. Not a whole lot of gain here, about three ounces from here to here, and then about 11 from here to here. So depending on you know what your total rig weight is or what you want to carry in your backpack, um, definitely take that into account. So real quickly, let's talk about usage. Um, you know, I mentioned that I'd, I actually hunted with the single pull last year. Um, and it is pretty nice that at, at the tallest, right? I mean, am I gonna just shoot from kneeling behind it? No, but as you can see here, I have a pretty big bag and it's not terribly difficult to fold up as long as my target is really kind of on my own plane or even downhill. Let's say you were just needing to shoot over some high grass, etc. I'm a pretty big guy, about 6'1", you know, 270. Uh, so it's kind of hard for me to fold up. If you were a smaller framed individual, it might be a little easier. The double pull, I feel, is the, really the sweet spot. I absolutely love it. Um, I ran this at NRL 22 Nationals last weekend, uh, and we'll be running it in a couple of field matches this summer as well. Even for a big guy like me now, I can really kind of sit down, fold up, and even with a little bit, you know, let's say less than a 10 degree incline, I can get down here and pretty easily get behind the scope if I need to. So once again, we're talking about field matches, quick positions, shooting over bar barriers, or even just various creativity that you would use in PRS style shooting. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Now, when we get to the triple pull, it's heavy, it is, uh, and it's kind of big, but man, look at this. I can literally from a high kneeling still shoot basically uphill. I am angling uphill from my plane of view right now. Uh, definitely downhill. Um, where does this really feel like it fits for me? Obviously, other than field matches, you know, the NRL hunter, stuff like that, which I'll obviously be using it for, is coyote hunting, right? Varmint hunting where you're sitting on your butt, kind of tucked back away in a hole, uh, but need that gun up very quickly. Um, when you want to talk about the maximum amount of stability as compared to some of your other kind of uh, sitting height bipods, man, this one's where it's at. So, you know, like I said, about 14 and a half inches, almost 18 inches, 36 inches here. Uh, a whole lot of capability here uh, and pretty awesome um, as far as uh, just the versatility you get out of it. So there you have it. There's your differences between your single, double, and triple pull sky pod. You know, your single really comes in at the lightest option of the three. Uh, very capable, uh, probably the most versatile and, and, and arguably the most stable. I don't know that it's a whole lot more stable than the double pull in most situations, but pro probably slightly. Um, you add a little bit more weight, uh, a significant amount more height and just some more versatility here in the double. I really think this is the sweet spot when you really talk about what do you need for field style matches. Really love the double for that. And then the triple pull obviously coming in for those hunters that wanna shoot seated or just a absolute monstrosity of versatility. It's gonna be that triple pull. Um, you know, you're adding a little bit of weight to boot, uh, but it's there. So. Um, hopefully this helps you uh, make the better decision. You cannot go wrong with any of them. Make sure you go check out uh, MDT's website uh, and get one coming your way. They're worth every dime and worth every ounce. I love them and I hope you will too. So if you like this video, make sure you go follow all of our pages for this content and similar. Um, so that's gonna be uh, long range tactics on all the platforms. 
Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we got a page and a group on Facebook. Make sure you go follow us as well as our website, longrangetactics.com. We just started a forum over there. Make sure you go check that out. Lots of people contribute into that uh, and really great source of knowledge for you as well. So make sure you support us. Let us know uh, what other items you'd like us to cover for you. Uh, and we hope to see you there and on the range. Have a good day. Thank you.